not as bubbly as in his hand. <laughs> but I did forget to get a gift. Uh, that's the only thing I can think of sitting back there. But I'll give Mr. Lewis a hug and he can pass it around. Just leave it to yourself. <laughs> The reason I'm here, and I, I think I've, everybody found it on their doorstep or something, the packet that I could leave as chapter and that research I did. And the reason we're doing this, everybody knows, is school prevention. Everywhere we've gone and sit and subject comes up, we can't, we can't not talk about it, so we have to face it. So uh, Stafford's real good at research, so he did a lot of that for us so we could have some facts and figures and see what's out there, see what our options are. Uh, I've talked to police officers with the state police, I've talked to a uh, retired Chicago cop, uh, I've talked to some uh, Louisville Metro, and see what they're doing. Uh, as we know, school shootings became an area of great concern to our schools, teachers, and parents, especially here recently with Connecticut. Uh, preventing juvenile mass murder in American schools is the job of police officers, school teachers, and concerned parents, and there's not anybody here that's not concerned, I know that. I, get a, I got a list of all the material and where we got it from, and it goes back to uh, something the staff had found that I was surprised, list of school shootings in the United States. I've just heard about a few of them. I didn't know there was this many. I was shocked that there was this many in the United States. Of course, this thing here goes back to the 1700s where they were dueling in uh, school. <laughs> 178 school shootings have been documented in the American alone, in America. From 1989 to 212, there have been at least 40 such incidents. The statistics show in our school shootings uh, 328 deaths so far. 394 injured, we lost 27 principals and 99 staff members. In these shootings, it talks about uh, even the janitors are getting shot, different reasons. Students, 596. The FBI reports there is no profile for a school shooter. School shootings are rarely impulsive acts and are usually planned in advance. Very few attackers direct threats before the attack and therefore are very difficult to prevent. Uh, a police officer in California sent me this about uh, Lieutenant Dave Grossman, a West Point psychologist, professor, and expert on human aggression and violence. He says, how many children have, we, have been killed in school fires in all of North America in the last 50 years? Zero. I thought, where's he going with this? Not one single kid has been killed by school fire anywhere in North America in the last half century. He asked how many kids have been <coughs> killed by school violence. Well, I just told you. Grossman says in 1999, school violence claimed what at that time was an all-time record number of kids' lives. In that year, there were 35 dead and a quarter of a million seriously injured due to violence in the school. How many killed by fire? Still zero. In 2004, we had an all-time record, 48 dead in the schools from violence. We have firefighters that have kept our kids safe and A-plus. The grade we get for protecting our kids from violence is not an A, by no means. Lieutenant Grossman says our problem is denial. So what did the firefighters do to fight children's death from fire? We, he put it out in black and white. They put sprinklers in the schools, material in the ceiling that won't burn. They put sheetrock in the schools that won't burn. And we practice fire drills two or three times a session. We have fire exits in all our rooms with battery packed up in case the fire goes out. We have fire hydrants outside. And he asks, are these fire guys paranoid or crazy? No, because the fire guy has redundant overlapping layers of protection. To fight this terrible crime, we have to understand that here it is, and we have to deal with the fact and help the general public understand that among us sheep, that the wolves are coming for our children. In studying the Columbine High School shooting, we found the teachers and students did the best they could. One of the classes I had, I saw the actual video footage at Columbine, and you wonder what goes on in an actual shooting, and you don't want to even think about it because it's so bad. Uh, the cameras from the school shows 
smoke where they threw off some pipe bombs, but they got most of the kids were in the library. They were hiding under the desk and stuff, and the actual video shows the shooters coming in, and the kids were hiding and screaming and trying to be real quiet on the desk. They would run over and kick the desk or kick a child until they got up and ran across the room, then they'd shoot them with a shotgun or whatever, just like rabbits. And the Connecticut shooting is probably worse than that. It means they were little bitty kindergartners. You know. <clears throat> the part he says about the now is the hard part is we don't want to think about it because it's so, it's so graphic. The report released by the Foreign Science Research Center in Minnesota says on the average the rapid mass murder episode lasts about eight minutes. I'm guessing it's probably shorter than that. It said unlike conventional criminal predators, which often have no reluctance, reluctance about attacking police, active shooters are cowardly. Like the one in Connecticut, they choose unarmed, defenseless, innocence for reasons. They have no wish to encounter someone who can hurt them. They are personally risk and pain avoidant. The tracking history of these murderers has proved them to be unlikely to be aggressive with police. If pressed, they are more likely to kill themselves. Tactics have changed where a lone officer should close in and finish the fight with aggression when confronting one of these mass murderers. Bors says a single officer should understand that this bad guy is one of the easiest man with gun encounter he will ever have. And I had never heard that before. I had a lot of police training and uh, Stafford has too. I had never heard this rationale about fighting a school shooter. All police officers in the United States have had active school shooter training. We changed our tactics after Columbine. We used to set up on the perimeter and wait for our SWAT team, but in Columbine, uh, one of the instructors at Eastern told me he talked to an officer out there and said officers were wanting to go inside because they were killing kids. He said, but policy is you wait. He said there were officers in fist fights outside because they weren't allowed to go in. He said they're, out, they're in there shooting our children and we're standing outside. They look back now and say, you know, it was a terrible thing to do this way. So, uh, and what all police officers do now, we get a call to a school shooting and one of my lieutenants with state police was down in Paducah when that shooting occurred. He said if, if a school shooting ever occurs, you get everybody you can, on duty, off duty, anybody head that way because he said you probably have to park a mile from the school because all the parents would be there because they would get out real quick. And he said what our training is now, what we practice with these the paintball guns, the 30 shooter, whatever officer gets in the school first, Runs in, pulls your gun, try to find. We used to have set up a triangle and sneak down the hall. We run to wherever the shots are. If he's in the room, we run in the room and try to eliminate him as soon as possible to stop the threat. If I get killed and the next officer shows up, that's how they do it. And that's why all officers in the United States are trained now. Well, they, and the good thing about that is they are very cowardly. Once confronted by police, they more likely to commit suicide. Which brings us to here. Play, and we looking at our options, and, and I don't know, I don't know what the school boards. I know y'all like us thinking, what in the world can we do different? What options are out there? We did some research, and placing an armed officer in every school is one technique that is being explored by many schools throughout the United States. I think the president was in the news last night or yesterday. He's recommending a thousand new school resource officers in the United States. But there's over 100,000 schools, public schools in the United States, and it's less than 1%, you know. Whoever gets one would be great, but there's not enough to go around. Deputy Stafford obtained a copy of the Herald Texas High School Policy, which allows for the staff to be armed. I was curious to see what their policies were, what their reasoning was, and what their options were, and how to make it safe. Because well, they've been doing it since uh, 2007, I believe. Here's the reasoning and purpose they decided to do it. Recognizing the districts are located in a somewhat isolated area and that response to emergency first responders, <coughs> including law enforcement personnel, takes a, max, a minimum of approximately 30 minutes, <coughs> the board adopts the following policy to address concerns about effective and timely response to emergency situations in schools, including invasions of the schools by an armed outsider, hostage situations, students who are armed and posing a direct threat of physical harm to themselves or others. And we look back, uh, Fordville, Horse Branch, Southern, Western. 
Uh, time you get the call from a school that there's an intruder, or going to take a couple minutes, get it to dispatch, time dispatch gives it out to an officer anywhere, and gets them headed that way, it's probably three minutes or more, and then where we're at, it's going to be 30 minutes or hopefully less to get to where we're going, especially for us, you know. That's the scary part. I had no idea we'd ever have to think about an armed intruder breaking into the elementary school and killing an innocent kid. You know, our, our security is mostly on a student with a gun somewhere, high school, middle school, most likely. Uh, they have a lot of requirements down there in Harold, Texas. Uh, the employees that do carry a gun concealed must obtain and pass a current state law to carry their carry concealed. Uh, they have extra training. Any school employee authorized to possess a firearm on school property shall be provided additional training in crisis intervention, management of policy situations, and other training as the board deems necessary and appropriate. The ammunition, I didn't think about this, but the ammunition that you use in different types, the kind they use, it doesn't ricochet much, it expands and doesn't go very far, which would be very important. So we checked on the Kentucky law and the school board policy about what it says about carry concealed. Kentucky, said, Kentucky law says if a citizen has a carry concealed permit, he or she can have a gun on school property, but cannot bring the gun inside a school building unless given permission by the Board of Education. And I tell people, I said, we're not going to do that if we don't want somebody bringing a gun in a basketball game. You know, I said, we're not doing that. So don't even ask, you know. <laughs> School board policy, I think, says a school board, a school employee with or without a carry concealed permit cannot have a gun on school property. <coughs> uh, the Federal Gun Free Zone Act, I thought that would get us where you couldn't carry a gun, but it says if you're allowed to carry a concealed weapon license in the, in the state you live in, you're exempt from the Federal Gun Free Zone Act. So that means if, uh, if you got a carry concealed permit from Kentucky that you can carry it on school property, but not in a building either. It doesn't change. I've gone around and talked to all the principals. Uh, the only one that wasn't, I didn't get a hope of was uh, the one at Wayland, Miss uh, Storm. She's still on maternity leave. To see what they thought, you know. I said, here's an option we're kicking around, you know, carrying a concealed weapon. What do you think? Of course, I got four female principals. Uh, after talking to her, I said, well, the worst part, we shouldn't have to be thinking about this to start with. And I agree. Uh, what are your options? Well, you don't have many. You just can't afford to put an armed officer in every school up. You know, I wish we could. It'd be great. Uh, every principal I talked to said they would do, eventually they said, we will do whatever y'all think we need to do to protect our kids. And I talked, uh, bring up Miss Hines. I talked to her about it. She goes, man, I hate to think about this. It's awful. And I said, yeah, I know. She said, I hate that added responsibility if I had to carry a concealed gun. She said, but Drew, my, adult, my child goes to school here now. She said, if somebody come in and start shooting, I'd do whatever it takes to protect my child. And I said, yeah, but you've got 285 kids there. And I said, I bet you think of them as your own anyway. She said, yes, I do. Every, and every principal here thinks every kid in that school belongs to them and they'll do whatever it takes to keep them safe. And, and there's not one that I haven't met that would do that. And the ones that have done it, you know, have lost their lives, but they did all they could do, you know. Uh, we went around and talked about our uh, school safety. What else we could do different other than uh, the possibility of carrying a concealed weapon? Uh, we went over a lockdown policy, and if some of that we're probably going to change. I got with Mr. Southern, but we're probably going to, we had like two levels, one, two. We're probably going to change it maybe where it's just one level. If we say lockdown, go into total lockdown, and then for a, if it's where it's an outside thread, then a few minutes we'll tell you later, you can resume normal teaching, just don't go inside or outside. Because uh, they were confused on level one and two. Some teachers thought, well, well, I thought you meant it was safe to continue educating, just don't go outside. Well, we meant, so we're going to do a total lockdown. Whenever we say lockdown, everybody goes in and hides and lock the door, be quiet, and in a few minutes we'll. So we're looking at that. I did talk to state police and the sheriff's office have been stopping at the schools for us different times uh, and just coming in being busy, being invisible, you know, that deters a lot of crime. You know, I know it does. I patrolled for 30 years and you never know what crime you're preventing by showing up, you know, by being visible at times. You never know. 
I talked to Bush, the trooper that, that worked here. He works for McLean and Ohio County, the only day trooper we got. So he's not here a lot, but he's he stopped by twice already that I know of. You only have one trooper for, during the day? Yes, yeah. I, when I worked day shift, I lived here, so I was over here more. I had McLean, I'd run over some, but most time I was here. But most of the troopers are needed at night. That's where most of the calls are, most activity and wrecks and everything, especially on weekends. You know, that's where most of them are. And, and another thing, we've got a sheriff's office here that does more now during the day. You know, I, I, I got to where I used to do a lot, but, uh, but having two counties, I was gone. But the sheriff's deputies here do a lot more calls than they used to, so that helps us out a lot. I don't know what the school board's feelings are about this matter and what options you're even considering. I'll just ask to get the information to you and see what I can come up with. Uh, we've talked to several people, Officer Staff, Debbie Stafford and I, and first off, there's a lot of gun nuts out there. You know, I arm everybody, put them in, get the backpack down, take them to school, you know. I'm not a gun nut. Uh, I've been around guns all my life, and I, and I didn't own a pistol until I joined state police. I worked 30 years as a state trooper, and 28 of those years I was a firearms instructor and range officer for the state police. <coughs> I have been trained on and shot every type of weapon the state police ever made. I have shot and coached the state police rifle team for 17 years. I have trained countless troopers in the shooting and safety for the use of firearms. Deputy Stafford has over 15 years in firearms instruction himself. Here's what we're recommending and see what y'all want to think about it. I know you don't have to make a decision, but if we want to get this information to you, we'll, we kind of battled around to see what our options are. <coughs> Possibly allowing two staff members at each school to carry a concealed handgun. Probably the principal and one more. Some of the schools didn't have an assistant principal. And, and I feel like if, if anybody there didn't want to do it, see who else wanted to do it. Having that staff member complete and obtain the Kentucky Carry Concealed Permit. It's an excellent class. <coughs> the shooting's not a whole lot to it, but it's an excellent informative class on use of deadly force. With the experienced deputy Stafford not having firearms, we can also set up a qualification course which allows for training in gun safety, gun handling, sh shooting, and gun retention techniques. The firearm must be of an approved make and model and caliber must be loaded with the approved expanding ammunition. We feel the recommend that the firearm must be concealed on the staff members at all times and never left unattended. Come up with something else today that uh, any carry concealed staff member will not engage with an out of control student. You know, sometimes you gotta jump on a kid and hold him down until we get there, or if we're just out of control. If anybody's in a position carrying a concealed weapon, we don't want them to grab anybody at all. <clears throat> just another safety measure. <clears throat> the staff members who are des deny designed to carry firearms will be the decision of the superintendent. They will be reviewed periodically and can be revoked at any time for any reason by the superintendent. Now I guess our greatest fear other than the killing of our students is can we allow staff <coughs> to carry a concealed handgun and be safe? Uh, I talked to Mr. Decker about it and he said, he said, here's what I think. He said, I'm a very educated man, and of course our principals are. He says, I have a lot of common sense, <clears throat> and I don't know much about guns, but I believe with the proper training by a qualified instructor, I would feel very confident to carry a handgun. This concern is also a concern for me. Stafford and I have done a lot of instructing with firearms, and I said, we can teach a person to shoot and shoot accurately. We can teach you safe gun handling skills. We can teach you gun retention techniques. I taught my two daughters to shoot a handgun, and neither one had ever shot before. They are both very good with them, and they are safe, and if they wasn't, I wouldn't allow them to have them around. They shoot better than a lot of troopers we have because I taught them the right way. Another thing we found in our research that favors arming a couple of staff members is the fact about the shooter. When confronted, he would most likely commit suicide or flee. You know, I didn't know that until I read that study. Whether we like it or not, it's something we're going to have to deal with because it's here. I don't have the perfect answer, 
Most of our security measures have been aimed at student with a gun. And now the unthinkable has happened, we have to worry about an armed intruder. Something uh, that I got to thinking about and uh, I told uh, Miss Bowling, whether we like it or not, the criminals dictate what we do as police officers. They always have. And I thought, well, how, how does that happen? And I said, well, when I was with the state police, I was a trooper in Pikeville, nobody wore their bulletproof vests. And people started getting shot, getting injured, so we all started wearing their vests. We, when I started, we had a 357 Magnum revolver. They had a shootout down in Florida. Three FBI agents and two deputies got shot and killed in a bank robbery. You had a shootout with some bad guys. The FBI and the deputies were reloading their revolvers. We had those dump pouches where you dump it out and you get six bullets and, you, and you're trying to reload and they had semi-automatic pistols and a rifle. And they come around by the car and shot them while they were reloading. So we changed our tactics. We went to 10 millimeter automatic pistols, semi-automatic pistols, the state police did. And then every cop in the country did because the bad guys had the best guns, you know. We were losing battles. Before I retired, I shot on the rifle team a lot, and we, uh, the state police purchased each rifles, so every trooper in the state of Kentucky has a rifle in recruiter now. Shotgun don't get it in a rural area like we were. You know, too far in other distances. Getting a gun battle, you need a rifle. Uh, another thing we changed because of criminals, uh, in Ohio and Indiana got to losing some troopers. Indiana had like three killed in one year on the interstate getting run over by a vehicle. And it wasn't all time to drunk, just somebody clipped them and, and killed them. So state police changed. We do right side of passenger approach now on interstates. And when, before I retired, we switched over and even on a two lane, if I had room, I would get out and walk around the passenger side and go up to a car. Safer for me. We had to change the technique there. The schools changed. I've only been here in four years working with the schools, and all the doors on the schools are locked on the outside now. And they've added new you know, lockdowns at the high school where you can get in. Now you've got to be buzzed in all the schools. That wasn't there, I don't think, four years ago. It might have been, but we've had to change that. We do a lockdown drill. Uh, same way when combating, combating meth. You know how bad that is, or was, or still is. Uh, we couldn't beat it. Everybody was making it, so they finally got the legislature where we outlawed, you know, the Sudafed, you know, or so much of it, you know, and kind of watched the batteries and stuff and stuff that were buying to make it. That's the only way we could fight. We had to change our tactics. I know, school board members, you have a great responsibility facing you over this situation. I feel like our students are like my own kids, just like the principals do. All of us will do whatever it takes to keep them safe. We have found that 18 states allow carry concealed weapons by adults on school property already, and Kentucky's one of them. I can't bring in a building, but they're allowed on property. There are six more states that we checked yesterday that have legislation pending that are considering doing the same thing. I'm just giving this information to you to give you an idea on what to do and whatever y'all decide to do, we'll do it 100%, you know. I don't have the magic answer, but I feel confident now after, after looking at the Herald, Texas, what their requirements are and the other stuff that we've added, that we can safely do that. But 100%, I don't know, you know, who knows. It's terrible we even have to think about that, but it's terrible somebody are coming in and killing our kids, you know, so, so I don't know what the answer is. It's just something for y'all to think about. And if y'all got any questions about anything, y'all lay it on us. We'll try to get you an answer. No comment. Okay. Um, I don't know how many actually read what you sent us, but I've been accused of reading too much. <laughs> I'm analyzing. Um, my observation is, since Connecticut, there seems to be more of a focus on an intruder coming in. Yeah. But if you look at the statistics, and I just took the 1990s, 23 out of 25 of the shootings started students inside of school. And I guess my question to the administration is, what are we doing to prevent these school, the children from bringing guns into our schools? I, I would venture to guess that 
if somebody wanted to bring a gun in the morning for High County High School, they come in the back door by the egg shop, yeah. they'd get in. Or well, they'd come in the front door in a backpack, we wouldn't catch it. You know, if no metal detectors were searching, you know. I spent two years in Cincinnati and worked in an area that was the high crime district in downtown Cincinnati. The schools there had uh, devices that metal detectors at the door. Mm -hmm. And they had people that are manning those uh, metal detectors. Searching mm -hmm. with the wands. Yeah. Uh, I'm not saying that's the answer, but I think that's something that we should address. Um, the other thing that's out there is uh, access to the back of our buildings during the day. Mm -hmm. uh, I could probably drive around any building, a school building in this district, and do whatever I want. So my, my thought process is, what do we do for them? Yeah. Is it to put a gun in the school? Possibly. I think the biggest opportunity we have is to make sure there's no guns coming in the school yeah. for the students. Uh, I think at some point, and probably sooner than later, we're going to have to hire and put security guards trained in our schools. I, I appreciate Ms. Hines' comment about I do whatever it takes. Yeah. And I really do. I understand that. But <coughs> we spent a lot of money, Mr. Lewis, making sure that the right student or the right teacher with a certain degree is there to teach our children. And at some point, we have to decide that whatever cost, we've got to put the most qualified person in our building carrying a gun. Not that the principal's not, right. but to think about the responsibility that the principals have and then to add to that the fact that they're going to carry a gun, I just can't imagine sleeping at night. I look at Mr. Greg Decker at the high school. My God, look, that man, I don't know how he has time to even breathe. And then to think that we would possibly get him a gun. And if the children know that, what happens if somebody comes up behind him and decides to take the gun off of him? Well, they want to take the gun off of him. Then we have brought the gun into the school. That makes sense? Yeah, I understand everything. We we thought of everything you said so far. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Lewis and I discussed some options about funding. Um, he indicated that there's there used to be, and correct me if I'm wrong, Scott, safe school money. Mm -hmm. That would used to be available. Um, hopefully uh, if you'll contact your uh, legislator. Maybe that's something that we'll have to put back in the budget for us. But I say all that to say this. We have got to figure out how to put qualified people in our buildings. Yeah. And it costs. And you may have heard I, uh, last month I about fainted over some of the, some of the money that we spent. But from my perspective, and I take this personally, if something happened tomorrow in our schools, I would look at myself as a board member and say, did we do everything we possibly could to prevent that? And in my mind tonight, I think we are, but there's probably something else we could do more. Yeah. And I think we all, until we reach that level of satisfaction, are going to have to explore every opportunity we can. I couldn't if, if I, and Mr. Martin and I talked about it uh, down the hallway a few minutes ago, there's no one that I would rather see to show up to help me than you and Mr. Staff. Thank you. I couldn't be any more proud of what you two guys do for this year. And the level of confidence I have, knowing that you're there. I appreciate that. We appreciate that. Uh, if there's a way we could Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some people might not want that. <laughs> I'm talking about that. I'm talking about that. <laughs> we put you Can off. we vote on that? <laughs> we put that class individual in our schools. How comfortable would you be, Ms. Hines? Very. 
So I think we have to look at it from the perspective of the dollars we spend uh, to make sure we have the best qualified teachers and, and staff our buildings and also look at that it's, it's equally important to make sure we have people in there that are protecting our children. Yeah. Prevent the guns. And it, it comes to a money thing, but you know, money don't mean, don't mean nothing. We lose kids, you know, you know how that goes. Mm -hmm. Something that uh, somebody mentioned, uh, I read in one of the articles about uh, what are we doing to keep guns out of schools? And, and something I, look, I reflect back on, in the four years I've been at uh, the school system, so especially the high school, we've had kids come up to me, or Mr. Ashbury, Mr. Decker, and say, well, so and so said he's going to kill somebody, so and so. So we investigate them, you know, we, you know, it's probably nothing, but we investigate them and look at it. And in the four years I've been there, we've probably had four or five instances like that. And when we, you know, one of the kids we got this year, of course it's not, we don't tell everybody, but we pick him up, kind of talk to him, and I thought, man, he's, he's acting a little squirrely. So we look at all their papers and their books and stuff, and he had a list inside that said, people I'm going to get even with, Greg Decker, Angela, and then on down the line, you know, had four or five people, and I told Greg, I said, just take it to another level. I said, he broke down, and he may just be being silly. Most kids are at high school or middle school, being silly. So we, we immediately took him to the renter center, you know, he's not at high school. He'll do this 15 weeks there, and he may come back here. But, you know, I feel confident we do have a good enough rapport with the kids that they're telling us they overheard this or overheard that, you know, and that makes me feel better. So that, that's one thing we're kind of doing in our community, in our school, to prevent something like that, you know. Because I believe if any kid out there heard or saw somebody have a gun, I think they'd tell us, you know. But they've already told them like four or five people that they, they're going to kill somebody or get even, you know. So that's one plus I feel we have at the school already of being there. And th this is one option, and, uh, you know, we got, we're trying to look at it, but whatever y'all want to do, we'll do it, you know. What's been your experience with um, those uh, State police, I, heard, I never even used one, never in my life. You know, the sheriff's office did up at the courthouse, you know, and the, the one thing. But to, to search, you almost have to stop and look in every backpack because there's metal objects in there. You can scan their body and not check their pocket, you know, their body, but they've got keys, and you got to check it out. I've heard the courtroom, you know, they're pretty lax. I heard my buddies up there. But I've stood up there talking, and it goes mean, and they say, go ahead. And you can't do that in school. And, it, and you know, if we did that, it, was, it would take, you just start school two hours early because everybody had to come in that one door. So we couldn't afford a you meal know, for every door, you know, and, and we sure do it, you know, if that's what it comes down to, because that's the only way you can prevent them from coming in. Because handguns, you know, they're so small. That's the problem. Okay. I'll go ahead. Have you seen uh, a change in the atmosphere, you and Officer Stafford, since you all have been in the schools as far as disagreements, fights, and things like that? Has that uh, gone down some since you've been in school? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, you know, and you know, with the Connecticut thing, we had a kid the other day, uh, Friday, thought, thought he might have some, thought he was high, might have some marijuana, you know, and, we searching a little bit in his pocket, so we, I charged him, and he's over at Render. And I thought, man, I hate to charge a kid now. I said, I'm here trying to protect all of them, you know, and worried about them. I hate to start getting them again, you know, but that's part of it, you know, he was, he was doing their own thing, so. But the kids seem like they're acting better since the Connecticut thing, they're, you know, they, I think they feel like they're glad we're there, you know. And, but we, can't, we gotta let them school, you know, that's the problem. They get to all of them, you know, we try to visit, you know, be seen, and of course some little fellas like at her school, man, they come over and hug me, you know, we, we like one of those. <laughs> but whatever y'all, whatever y'all want to do, we'll do her, and be glad to do it, but, you know, it's a lot of, a lot of hard decisions, man, I, I hate to be up there myself, but whatever y'all think we do, we'll do it 100%, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna your house tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so there's something for him. It's funny, John.